Hey, y'all, it is Dr. Jada again, and welcome back to Mind Matters. And today we are going to talk politics. Yes, we are going to talk the psychology behind mental capacity for a president. What does all of that mean? So we're going to dive in um, very briefly here before I get into uh, the mental health, the mental health portion of this. So Today, the Supreme Court made a decision about whether uh, Donald Trump should be allowed to run for president in the state of Colorado. So, of course, there were the faction of people who attempted to stop Trump um, because of some of the events that took place at the Capitol three years ago. So the court said that Colorado didn't necessarily have the power to stop him. So he can still be on the ballot for the election. Now, the court's decision, interestingly enough, was made after they listened to arguments, of course, from both sides. So it's a big deal because this affects the presidential election this year, 2024. And of course, Trump was happy with the decision and said it was a win for America. On the flip side of that, others disagreed with the decision saying it could um, definitely set a bad precedent. So the argument itself was about a law from decades ago, um, which says that people who try to overthrow the government can't hold certain positions. But the court decided that Congress, not individual states, and I think that this is um, the important aspect of this whole story, is that Congress and not individual states should decide how to enforce this specific law. So it means that Trump can't be disqualified from running just because of the issues that happened at the Capitol three years ago. Now, not everyone on the court agreed with the decision. Some of the justices said the court was getting way too involved in a political issue and creating new rules. But ultimately, the decision simply means that Trump can still run and um that's like, that's the end of it. So what happened when I was, you know, reading about this today, um, it just made me think of a poll that I saw earlier. And it was, um, it was an AP poll. And it suggested that six in 10 US adults doubt the mental capability of both Biden and Trump. And I just went, hmm, Okay, so um, again, there's a, a there's a small connection here, but one just led me to the other, and I went, I wonder what what other people think about this. I just I wonder, and so that's what this video is about. So I wanted to dive into um, what does it mean to be mentally capable as a president. And so some of the things that I learned in kind of researching just a little bit, and if any of you have some input on this, please put it in the comments below. I'd love to know your thoughts on this. Um, so the requirements for a healthy mental capacity or mental capability for the president of the United States, of course, I believe can be complex and probably multifaceted. And while there are no very specific, definitive legal or even constitutional requirements regarding mental health for presidential candidates, um, certain attributes and capabilities are generally considered important for what I believe to be effective leadership. And so one of the things that I do on a regular basis is I work with people who have mental health disorders, or they may have symptoms of a mental health disorder, which um, impairs their ability to function on a day-to-day -day basis. And so when I am working with my clients, what I'm looking for is what's called their, their, their global functioning. And when I'm assessing them, it's called a global assessment of functioning. How are they functioning, like I said, on a day-to-day -day basis? And what does that look like? So number one would be their emotional stability. And so if, if I would compare this to, say, a president or someone in a high position of leadership, I would want to look at their ability 
emotionally to at least remain calm, composed, emotionally stable, resilient, particularly in times of crisis or stress. And it's really crucial. Emotional stability is very, very crucial for making, now here it is, rational, <laughs> rational decisions and maintaining public confidence. And so what I think is we want our president to maintain rational public confidence. So when we see you, we're like, okay, we know that because you're able to um, hit the war button that uh, we're in good hands. And so emotional stability. Number two would be, of course, cognitive functioning. Um, a president should, of course, demonstrate clear thinking, sound judgment, and the ability to process complex information effectively. Complex information effectively. And so, again, I don't have a dog in the fight. I'm just talking about mental health. So if you have something you want to say about Trump or Biden, by all means, have at it. I'd love to know from a cognitive functioning perspective, do you think based on what most Americans have already said, remember, and what I'll do is I'll drop the AP poll um, in the comments below so you can go and check it out. But after I looked at it and reviewed it, I was like, okay, I can see that they all voted along party lines. And so it was highly partisan. So I don't know, as far as I'm concerned, I could see uh, Democrats saying mostly negative things about um, Trump and then Republicans saying mostly negative things about Biden. However, independents were in there, but it seemed like independents leaned a little more toward Trump than um, Biden. But either way, I'm going to let you be the judge, but I'd love to know what you think. So please comment below, hit the like button, please subscribe to the channel and um, oblige me and enter into conversation with me. Um, because again, when it comes to cognitive functioning, we want our president to be able to process complex information effectively. And so this would include critical thinking skills, problem solving abilities, and the capacity to understand and analyze a wide range of issues. So we just did one and two, emotional stability, cognitive functioning. Number three is empathy and interpersonal skills empathy and in interpersonal skills. Now, maybe I kind of think this is important because I'm a therapist, but I, I believe that if a person is in leadership, they should have healthy social skills and they should be able to connect with people in a healthy way. And so I believe, and this is my belief, a president, regardless whether it's Republican or Democratic, I don't care, I'm just looking at it from a psychological perspective. A president must possess strong interpersonal skills and the ability to empathize with diverse perspectives and experiences and connect with people in a healthy way. And so I believe that um, effective communication is a part of this and the capacity to build relationships both domestically and internationally. So again, to me, that's what a good leader would be. That is what a great president would be. And I think that, you know, ultimately this is important for successful diplomacy and govern governance. You, you, you have to be able to look at the big picture, not just through a very small hole and only see um, aspects of um, the issues, but to really pull back and see it from a macro view. So that's number three. Number four, adaptability and flexibility. Adaptability and flexibility. So the ability to adapt to changing circumstances, revising strategies when necessary, being able to pivot and turn on a dime and, and being able to remain open to new ideas and information. Again, to me, that is all vital in being an effective president with a strong mental capacity to make the right decisions for our country. And so again, if you're if you're 
if you can be fluid, you know, you can move and you can pivot and you can be flexible. Hey, to me, that's great leadership. Number five is resilience. A president should be able to withstand criticism, of course, um, to be able to stand setbacks and adversity without becoming so overly reactive and discouraged. And so again, that that's a great leader. A great leader is one who's resilient. And to me, resilience enables a leader to persevere through challenges and maintain a long-term focus for the outcome of specific goals. When you're short-sighted or nearsighted, you, you may be able to hit those short-term goals, but for the sake of the country, you have to be willing to look beyond um, what one sees in the distance. And so I think that would be um, another really strong mental capability of a president. And then number six is ethical integrity. Ethical integrity. So in other words, what are we talking about? A president has to have integrity and um, be honest and have a commitment to the ethical principles, which are fundamental for gaining and maintaining public trust. Um, if it were up to me, you know, I, I'd probably say if we could find one person who could speak to all people, that would be awesome. But we know in our country, that's not necessarily uh, going to happen. So as it relates to that, I would love what's to know what's most important to you. Is integrity important in a president? Because we can look on both sides right now. We have a long list of integrity issues on Trump's side. We have a long list of integrity issues on Biden's side. It seems like there are a lot of integrity issues. And I'm just wondering, what, what, do, you, what do you all think? What do you all think? Is, is integrity important for a leader, the leader of the free world, the, the leader of our country? I wonder. I want to know what you think. Because I believe a president must uphold the highest standards. The highest standards of ethical conduct. And of course, I think it's important to demonstrate transparency and accountability in making decisions. So it's so very important. And then finally, number seven, and I think this is one that is coming up because of the age of both Trump and Biden. So my understanding at this point today, Trump is 77 years old and Biden is 81 years old. And there is a part of me that says, I don't really care how old a person is. I just want to know, are they capable, right? So number seven is physical health. Physical health. What do you all think about this one? Physical health. So of course, as a mental health counselor, we can't separate the mental and psychological from the physical or the physiological. We, we can't separate or even the biological because when, when I'm talking to my clients, you know, one of the first things I want to know from them is, do you have a history of mental health disorders? And why is that? Because epigenetics comes into play. And that's a completely different um, discussion. But physical health, physical well-being, all of those um, elements of our physical health comes into play. So while mental health is, of course, a primary, a primary concern, physical health, I think, is just as important it plays a role in, in the overall well-being and capacity to um, maybe fulfill some of the requirements or fulfill some of the demands on the role of presidency. So, of course, maintaining good physical health through, you know, just regular exercise, nutrition, adequate rest and support. Um, I think that all of those elements um, is important for mental capacity. So. That's it. Those are my seven 
areas. I'm going to repeat them one more time. So number one, emotional stability, cognitive functioning, empathy and interpersonal skills, adaptability and flexibility, resilience, ethical integrity, and physical health. So I just want to note, I don't have a dog in the fight. I'm talking mental health only. And I know this is a politically driven discussion, but I honestly want to know from you, what do you think? Because our country is already so divided. There are so many elements, you know, it's black and white and brown and green, and this group is against that group. And, and, you know, how do we get to a place of pulling back and just saying that we want the best person for the job? How do we get there? How do we get there? So again, want to know what you think. Do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, please. Uh, share, 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 share across your platforms. And until the next video, God bless you. And I hope that you are all enjoying this content.